scripture here this morning that I believe uh, is for someone here today. And uh, I know all these songs that, that we've heard this morning about He never gave up on you. And then this one, it matters to you, it matters to the Master. Might be the Lord preparing your heart uh, for what I'm going to preach this morning. And uh, look at verse, the book of Jude. And I want to begin uh, reading, let's see here, uh, with uh, over there in verse 20 maybe, uh, about verse 20. Uh, the book of Jude, only one chapter, verse number 20. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some, have compassion, making a difference. And others, save with fear. Pulling them out of the fire. Hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. And then he finishes up all these great words by saying this. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. With exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior. Be glory and majesty and dominion, and power, both now and ever. Amen. Back in verse 24, it said, Now unto him that is able, that is able to keep you from falling. I want to preach this morning on the subject, he's able. He's able. That means that God in heaven is able to do whatever needs to be done in your life. If, there, if there's a problem in our life, the problem is never with God. If somebody's having a, a mess, people say, well, why don't, why don't God help me? It's, it's never God's fault that we're in the mess we're in. Uh, we'd be a lot worse if he wasn't merciful to us. So this morning, he's able. I want to say just a few things about it this morning. Maybe encourage you a little bit. Uh, people today have a weird view of God. Uh, they see, I don't know if they give them cartoons or movies or just uh, video stuff. Uh, well, he's over there in that little trailer park down below exit 103 one day. He's walking across there, and, and there was a, a girl about maybe 15 or 16. We was out there giving out tracks, and we give her a track, and we was with her, and she's just walking across the yard, and she said something about the devil. And uh, one of them said, one of them said, if, if God and the devil got in a fight, who would win? And she said, I don't know, the devil. And and she just kept walking. And I thought, you know what that nut thought? They, 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 they see the devil in cartoons and he's big, you know, and got muscles and he's breathing fire and everything. And then they see them pictures of Jesus in cartoons. Uh, or he's about that wide and he's got hands look like a girl and he's, he's got red hair and blue eyes and, and he's real anemic looking. Uh, that's uh, that, They get that picture of God. But let me tell you something, people. God Almighty that's not a picture of God Almighty. Listen, God Almighty is exactly that, Almighty. The devil's not Almighty. He's powerful, but he is not Almighty. So this morning, let's think about he's able. Let me say this morning, he's able to save to the uttermost. God is able to save to the uttermost. He's able. He's able to save to the uttermost. Doesn't matter how deep you've been in sin, he's able to save you. Doesn't matter how deep your loved ones have gone into depravity and wickedness, he's able to save you. I have story after story after story. I read about the famous Billy Bray. Billy Bray was a coal miner back in England in the mid-1830s. I mean, he was mean as a snake. And he worked and he got drunk and he lived for the devil and somebody told Billy Bray about the Lord. And Billy Bray got saved. And when he got saved, his life changed. He laid down alcohol. He, he got going for God. And he got called to preach. And he was known as the shouting preacher. You've heard me tell about him before. No, Billy Bray, he, he was one that said he, he shouted all the time. He said, go down the road. And he said, one foot hit the ground. He said, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I've tried that. 
uh, and I'm, I, don't know, I don't know if it does any good or not. I don't want to be vain repetition, but I've, I've tried that a lot. When I was running, I said, Lord, bless the youth rally. Lord, please, Lord, please, Lord. And I try that. And I thought, I can think about Billy Bray walking down the road saying, thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. And you know what? God reached down and changed the life and saved Billy Bray. I thought about D.L. Moody. All these great people in, in church history and how God saved D.L. Moody. I thought about uh, here just in North Carolina. You ever talk about all the great preachers that's come right out of here in this part of the country, especially North Carolina? One revival they had, only one little boy got saved. That became uh, Dr. A.T. Robertson. Uh, you know of him as a great Greek scholar. Wasn't, he wasn't right on his Bible, but, but he was a tremendous scholar uh, that knew a lot at his time. And then another revival happened in North Carolina. One little boy got saved. His name was George W. Truett. And George Truett became a great preacher and preached all over the country. You know, another young man that got saved down in Charlotte, Billy Graham, uh, when Mordecai Ham preached. And you know, another uh, uh, young man, Brother Danny in Nebo. <laughs> I, I, I'm not a, I, but uh, listen, you know what? That's the Lord. He's able to save to the uttermost. He's able to save to the uttermost. Now, why do I say that? Because there's people in this room today that have a son, you have a daughter. You have a, a, uh, a sister, you have a brother, you have an uncle, you have somebody in your family, and you have somebody who, who you, you reach out to, and you reach out to, and you try to talk, and they shut you down. You leave them a track, they won't read it. You invite them to something special, they never come. But I'm going to tell you this morning, he's able to get a hold of them. He's able, he's able, people. He's able, he's able, he's able. I read about uh, old Ty Cobb. And old Ty Cobb was a famous baseball player. One of the most famous baseball players of all time. Uh, played in over 3,000 games. And for 12 years, Ty Cobb led the, the American League uh, in batting average, batted over 400 in four years in a row. That's tremendous for a, for a baseball player. He batted average over 400 four years in a row. And Ty Cobb was famous. Ty Cobb was wicked. But old Ty Cobb got sick and he wound up on his hospital bed and he's laying there on that hospital bed and somebody come in and witness to him and he gave his heart to the Lord. Ty Cobb got saved. And he got saved and changed. It wasn't just one of these fake, scared, I'm going to die and repent. You know, some people, uh, th 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 it, it was real. And you know what he done? He said, go back and tell the boys. He said, the boys on the team, he said, go back and tell them that I got in. He said, tell them that I, I wish I'd have done it sooner. He said, I got in at the bottom of the night, boys. At the bottom of the night, but thank God I got in. I wish I'd have done it in the first inning, but I got in. Ladies and gentlemen, he's able to save to the uttermost. He's able to save your husband. He's able to save your son. He's able to save your daddy. He's able to save uh, your, your uncle, your aunt, your mom, your dad. Your daughter, your son. There's people sitting in here this morning. Your your child, your kid has broke your heart. And, and you're thinking, oh my Lord, Lord, how can this happen? I never believed this could happen to my own family. I never dreamed that when my kids would go down that direction and go there. Let me tell you this morning, he's able. He's able. He's still able. Don't you give up. Don't you quit praying. He is able this morning to save to the uttermost. That's right. John Newton. On that slave trade ship. Wicked man. Wicked. Oh my goodness. Ungodly man. And John Newton. God got a hold of him. And John Newton got saved. You say you reckon he really got saved? He wrote Amazing Grace. He wrote the song Amazing Grace people. God gave him one of the greatest songs. In the history of the Christian church. And I'm telling you this morning. If God can get John Newton. If God can get Billy Bray, if God can reach Dale Moody, if God can save Charles Haddon Spurgeon, if God can get a hold of Ty Cobb on his deathbed, if God can get him, he's able to save your family too. He's able. He's able. Don't you give up. You, I've heard people tell me, they say, brother, I just gave up. on No, no. He never gave up on you. Don't you give up on them. Don't you give up on them. Don't you give up on members of your family. Don't you give up on them. Uh, you say, well, they won't even listen to me. 
Yeah, but they somebody can go in their room at night and they can't help from listening to him. Hey, somebody get a hold of them on that hospital bed, buddy. I knew a man one time in Marion, and boy, he he hated me. He didn't he didn't like what I preached. He he didn't like our church. Oh, good night. And he let it be known too. I went to try to witness to him one day, and he said, uh, he said, Well, see, I I thought he watched Garner Ted Armstrong or somebody on TV. The devil always makes sure that you watch, you know, some nut when you're trying to figure out a reason not to believe the Bible. And he said, turns out that hell is just like in your basement. He said, hell is just a pit. It's just a pit in the Bible. And uh, so he didn't believe, you know, you'd actually, you know, there's actually conscience torment, conscience torment in hell. And uh, I said, no, that's not right. He said, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. He showed it in the Greek there where it's just a pit. Now, now the truth is, hell is a pit. But every pit is not hell. Hell is called a bottomless pit, but it is a particular pit. Just because you dig a pit out here, that ain't hell. That ain't hell. Uh, uh, the Bible said the rich man died and was buried. Man asked me about this yesterday. Uh, he said the rich man died and was buried, and in hell he lifted up his eyes. So his body was in the grave. His soul was in another place. That was a pit his body was in. And I told that man, he, no, 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 he didn't like me. He had never come to church. He wouldn't step foot in the church. Years and years and years went by. They kept praying for him, kept praying for him, and kept praying for him. Sooner or later, sure enough, he turned up with cancer and wound up with cancer and got sick and got worse and worse and worse and worse. And you know what? I lost touch with the family. And then somebody told me, I said, what happened to old so-and-so? They said, Brother Danny, he got saved. Before he left this world. He got saved. Now, th now these, these are people that, that say, I don't even believe the Bible. The Bible's not even right. There's no such thing as hell. These, these are people that say that. I'm telling you this morning to, so you'll know, don't you ever quit praying for somebody because he is able to save them. He is able to save them. He's able to transform them. I, I remember this guy in, in Marion years ago. We had this tent. Well, it wasn't actually a tent. It was a barn revival. We had an old-fashioned barn revival. And that was before, I guess, I don't know if there's anybody even here that, that may have went to the barn revival. That's before I met about anybody in here. And a guy, a friend of mine, rented the barn, or he let him, he let him use it. He's up there near McDowell High School. And a big old red barn that hadn't used in years. And you had to climb up steps. like in America, And it was really kind of neat, really. It's about, it's probably maybe about half as big as this, this room here. And uh, actually, you know, the old wood and everything made, made you think you was in one of them old Sheppy movies or something. And, uh, and, we, and the barn was there, and we had a revival in there. And we had a boy that got burdened for a guy in Nebo named Pinky Beck. And old Pinky Beck had been around Nebo for years and years and years and years and years. And then this boy got a burden for him. He said, Lord, I pray you'd save Pinky. Lord, I pray you'd save Pinky. Lord, save Pinky. And they, they begged and begged and begged Pinky to come to church. And uh, and most most of us thought, ah, that probably ain't going to happen. He ain't going to And, and we, we had a little church. There wasn't nothing fancy. No no big fancy PA system. No big fancy lights. Nothing like that. I mean, just a bunch of us guys. I haven't been preaching but just a few months. Uh, Brother Delane Woody. Uh, I'd set it up, you know, he, he got it all going, you know, and everything. And that old barn there, was, I, I liked it, but it wouldn't be nothing attractive. Or he had to park out in the grass, and, and uh, people come in there that night. And you know what? That boy that got the burden for Pinky, he said, oh Lord, he said, God, I'm fasting and I'm praying. God, if you say Pinky, I'll run the aisles. And you know what? Sure as the world, that night they come and somebody preached, and Pinky came and got saved. He got saved because I, well, he run the aisle I, around, that, around that barn. He took off a running, shouting and hollering and screaming. And you say, well, don't you think that's a little extreme? Not quite as extreme as some people last night with the, with the ball game. Uh, but uh, uh, he run the aisle, brother. He run the aisle. And I don't care if you run around for a ball game. I don't care. Listen, my kid dunked one backwards, I'd run around too. But they sure ain't nothing wrong with running around for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God, brother. When the Lord God in heaven answers your prayers and one of your friends gets eternal life, and going to get to live in heaven. That's running ground right there. That's running ground. That's shouting ground. 
That's shouting ground, people. Listen, if what we believe in here is true, and you know what I mean when I say that, I believe it's true. Uh, what we believe in here is true. We have every right, and we got good sense. We should raise our hands and say, praise God, he's able. We serve a God that's able. We serve a God that's able. You're sitting in here this morning, you say, Brother Danny, you don't know what I have to live in. You don't know how bad it is at my house. You don't know. No, I do not. I do not. I honestly, my heart goes out to you. If you're living in a bad situation, some of our kids here at the church, uh, they they beg their bus workers not to take them home. I, I can tell you two or three that Kelly has uh, uh, probably here today. That we had one with us yesterday that did not want to go home. Did not want to go home. Uh, uh, Spencer has some uh, that just hang on him. And he said, I got to take you home. No, we want to stay with you. You don't know what those little kids have to go into. I'm telling you this morning, by the authority of this book right here that stood the test of time, there's a God in heaven that sees those little kids' hearts and He knows the cry of their heart. Thank God He's able uh, to do something in that family. He's able, He's able, He's able. That's why I'm excited about the youth rally. I always get excited about the youth rally because I know He's able. He's able. Never do we ever have a youth rally that God in heaven don't reach down and change somebody permanently. Yeah. I was uh, preaching in Florida a few years ago, and uh, uh, you've heard me tell this, and uh, down near about the middle part of that Winter Haven, and uh, I was up there, and the, the guy singing, big old boy, young guy. I mean, this guy, he was a big guy. He's a big guy, about, about six foot five, and their shoulders about that wide. And he was up singing. He's just a young boy. Had a lot of enthusiasm. And he was, you could tell it when he's leading singing. He just had some enthusiasm. And uh, I enjoyed it. And I thought, man, where'd that guy come from? That's a blessing. Huh? That is, y'all got you a great song leader here. What a blessing that is. And you know what? Lady came up. She said, Brother Danny, he got saved at your youth rally. I said, he did? She said, yeah. We brought a couple of van loads up there year before last. And he got saved. Said, he's got in here. And now he's involved. They think he might be a preacher. You know, and you know what? I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that. You know what? I went back, my mind went back to all the work, all the decorating, all the prayers, all the fasting, all the stuff that we did. Yeah, and the God in heaven who's able reached down and saved that boy. And now he's he's probably he might be preaching somewhere this morning. I don't know. I'm telling you, the Lord is able. There's an old boy in, in, uh, in Marion many, many years ago. And I don't know if maybe anybody knows him in here or not yet uh, uh, either. His name is Jerry Delaney. Do you remember Jerry, Debbie? She's probably the only one in here. That man, Jerry Delaney, was, grew up in the hippie movement of the 70s. And he was an honest to goodness real hippie in Marion. I mean, long hair. They were them, them bell bottom blue jeans coming back in style. And, I mean, you couldn't even see if he had shoes on or not. And uh, uh, he, he hung around there marrying them boys. And they got they got a hold of drugs, and that's when uh, uh, the Beatles introduced it. Then Woodstock, and all of them, they just kicked it off, and all them young people started wanting to get high, and they'd smoke um, uh, weed, and and they got that THC. I uh, learned how to, I mean, sniff airplane glue, uh, uh, smell, uh, gasoline. I know guys, I know guys that put their face down in a gas can and sniff it, so they just passed out. Uh, because I couldn't afford it. It's true. It's true. I, can, I can name him. And that's what they used to do. And my friends, my friends would get airplane glue and put it in a in a bag, a sandwich bag, and they'd sniff it. And I said, what in the world are you doing, man? You crazy? And they'd say, oh, man, it's a, it's a Jimi Hendrix experience. Made purple haze. <laughs> you know, i say, yeah, you got purple haze, all right. You're nuts. And I, and I, I got saved. I got saved, but I never did do nothing like that. I mean, I was a sinner, but I wasn't stupid. Not that bad. Uh, and uh, I, I know something tells me you're not supposed to put airplane glue in your brain. Don't that, don't that make a little bit of sense? <laughs> and <laughs> I'm all for feeling good, but good night, y'all. That ain't right. That's crazy. And, and you know what? They, oh, Jerry got worse and worse and worse. Some of them boys fried their brain and, and never did get right. Well, in the revival that I got saved in, the Holy Ghost moved all over Nebo. And sure enough, Jerry got saved. Somebody brought him to church. And Jerry got saved up there at Nebo Baptist. He was about that tall. His hair was real thick and going like this. Like Ted Nugent. 
and he's real in, and he's just standing there and look like that right there. And old Jerry was rough. I mean, he was rough. And I'm telling you people, immediately his life changed. I'm talking immediately. He got him a Bible. He come to church. Every time he'd come to church, you could see a difference in him and a more difference in him. It wasn't long that he was holding his own Bible. Back then, Roses was on Main Street in Marion back in them days. And many of y'all remember that? And everybody was hanging out town. Before all the malls and stuff come around, and these little strip malls, uh, all the town people go town on Saturday. And Jerry, every time you go to Marion, he'd have somebody up against the wall showing them scripture like that. He led more people to the Lord. Un unbelievable. Like I said before, I, he's one of the best soul winners I ever met in my life. And him, Brandon's mother uh, was, I mean, they'd win anybody the Lord. Anytime, any place. If I was just a sinner, they'd go get them. And, uh, and he, he had these guys up there, and he came in. It wasn't long that he come in. He had on a shirt and a tie. I mean, he got his hair cut. He started, he started singing in the choir. It wasn't long that he was preaching and preaching out on the street. And I run into him one day, and I said, what have you been doing, Jerry? He said, he said Danny, I've been in my Bible. He said, I've read half the New Testament this week. It's about Wednesday. Three three days, half the New Testament. And and my pastor, Hall Hollifield, he'd been preaching for 40 years. And he said, I've never seen a man change like that man changed. And every time Jerry'd come to church, he'd have four or five old rough looking hoodlums with him. And he and we'd get an invitation. He'd bring one down, he'd get saved. He'd bring another down, he'd get saved. I mean, they didn't all pan out. But I tell you one thing, brother. He was a testimony to the city of Marion, North Carolina, that God, something happened to that guy. Something happened to him. I'm talking about, you're talking about from hard drugs to out giving out tracts on Main Street, holding a King James Bible and telling it everywhere you go. That, listen, if, if, if you don't know a harder case than that was. You don't know anybody that's worse off than he was. I'm telling you, he's able. He's able. He's able to save. He's able to save. Look, when I got saved, I mean, I didn't do drugs or I didn't drink or nothing like that, but I was probably very unlikely, uh, most people would say, to get saved. If you took all the kids in my high school graduating class and you looked at our, our class and said, which one of them is going to be a preacher, I, I wouldn't have got picked. I'd have probably been next to last. There's one boy meaner than me. Uh, but uh, uh, probably, they said, no, he ain't going to be no preacher. He ain't going to be no preacher. And I'd still run into people like that. Danny. I heard you as a preacher. That's right. How did you get to be a preacher? Lord, what do you do? How do you just become a preacher? How do you just, how, what do you have to do? You have to go somewhere and, and no, no, you don't. Well, how did you just be, you mean just anybody can get up and start preaching, start a church? That's right. Uh, and they said, you mean you never went to school? Nope. Uh, you said, you never had a, a official training? Nope. Uh, he said, uh, Brother Daniel, how did I? I said, the Lord called me to preach. And he told me to preach. And I just went and done it. I'm telling you, people, God done something for me. And he can do something for you. There's somebody sitting in here this morning just as sure as my name's Danny. And God wants to do something in your heart. Maybe you've been coming a few Sundays. And deep, deep down inside, you know something still ain't right. You know something's missing. Deep down inside you, you know there's something you don't have. There's something need. You can get that fixed here today. Thank God he's able. Thank God he's able. Thank God he's able. I want to say also this morning, he's able to fill your heart with the joy of the Lord. Now, I, 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 I told you before, the difference between joy and, and, and fun. Everybody nowadays says, oh, it's fun. Let's go. It's so much fun. Nothing wrong with having fun. But there's a big difference between joy and fun. Fun has to do with how, like happiness has, is happening, the circumstances around you. Uh, you go to a water park or you go to a, a ball game or you go to a, a, I don't know, a restaurant or something, and you have fun. You laugh, you go, that's fun. Joy don't have to have any of that. It bubbles up from down inside you. In other words, you can have joy while you're at work. You don't have to be loafing to have joy. You don't have to be eating or doing something that's pleasurable to the flesh to have joy. Joy bubbles up from the inside. And you've heard me tell, I was driving, I had that little MG, and I'd take the, the top down on that thing, 
And uh, I got saved in April. So May, June, July, that first summer, I'd go to camp meetings and we'd go to church every time the doors open. And I had a little, uh, uh, a little MG and it was orange, bright orange. And I'd take the top down off of that thing. It wasn't big as, it wasn't big, they were little bitty ones. I mean, like a, a, a Mazda Miata, that'd be the closest thing you could compare it to. And uh, I remember one day I was coming down the road, down from Nebo, coming this way. And I was coming through all them curves there uh, near where, where Todd's shop is right now, where they, where they keep their equipment and stuff. And I was, them curves go just like that. And going from Nebo to Glen Alpine, it's just like that. And then it goes like this. And that's fun, really a fun drive if, if they'd leave you alone. But uh, uh, but uh, they they won't. So you gotta you gotta go slow. But uh, it I didn't go slow then. I was flying around them curves, flying around them curves. And all of a sudden, I began to think. I was 18, and I remember thinking, I'm going to heaven. Whew! I'm not, I'm not going to go to hell because I always thought before I got saved. I always thought I'm gonna wreck this thing one of these days. And, and, and it's yours world. I'm going to die without God and go to hell. And my, my mom told me, Danny, you need to get right. And, I, and then I'm not going to hell. I'm going to heaven. And I was going around them curves. And something started coming up like this. And I don't know how, how it is with you, but the more I get blessings, the, the faster I want to go. <laughs> I, 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 that's my excuse. Well, I don't know what yours is. But it's true. Isn't that true? You get to think about the Lord, how good he's been to it, man. Yeah. And, and, and I was going around them curves like this, and I was getting faster and faster and faster. And next thing I know, I was crying. I didn't have a, I didn't have a, a, a I wasn't, I didn't have a bunch of people around me cutting up. I wasn't listening to, wasn't watching a movie that got to me emotionally. I wasn't, I was just driving down the road. And tears started coming down my cheeks. I was like, I'm not going to hell now. I'm not going to, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I, was driving, and I started, and I didn't know what to do. Every church I passed, I just prayed, Lord bless that church. Lord bless that. I didn't even have prayed for the Jehovah Witness. I don't know. I didn't get hit and I'd know the difference. I, Lord bless that church, fill it full. Lord bless that church, fill it full. Lord bless that church, fill it full. And you know what that is? The Bible said that joy. The Bible said that when you get eternal life, it is a well of water springing up in you. There's something gets on the inside of you. And he's able. You say, Brother Danny, I know what you're talking about, but it's been a long time since I felt. Now what you've done, you've let the devil cheat you out of that joy. There's nowhere in the Bible where it says you have a whole bunch of joy for the first two years. And then after that, you have to just tough it out. The Bible don't say that. Uh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I'm telling you this morning, brother, God's still God. Heaven's still sweet. Hell's still hot. Bible's still true. The joy of the Lord can still bubble up in your soul. You know what you need to do? Get down here this morning, rededicate your life, get back in church where you need to be, get back in your Bible, leave off all the junk, and let the glory of the bubble up in you once in a while. I'll say this, I'm, I'm done. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able to, uh, to, to raise the dead one day at the judgment day. He's able to raise us. That means we've got the promise. Bible said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Woo! The voice of the archangel and the trump of God. Don't say trumpet. It says trump. Trump is a sound the trumpet makes. Beep! That's, that's the trump, the sound. The trumpet is the instrument. And he said, with the trump of God. That's where people get that confused with that last trumpet of that angel in Revelation 7. Uh, or, I mean, Revelation, the seventh angel. It don't say the angel's trumpet. It said the trump of God and the voice of the archangel. And the Lord's going to say, scope. And when he says that, all the dead in Christ will rise. Every person that's ever been saved by his grace will come back. Their body will come back together. And they'll come out of them graves. Oh, good night, preacher. You really believe that? Sure, sure I believe that. You say, what about people just got blown to bits in the war? 
He can put them back together again. He knows exactly where them DNA, all them molecules are, and everything. He made the first time, he ain't going to have no problem putting it back together and making it a second. Lazarus stunk, brother, and he got him up. After four days, uh, he can get Granny up. She's been in there 400 years. He can get Papa up, and he's been in there 4,000 years. He's able to raise. They said one time that they had a rock concert years ago when all them come out, and they said a, a hippie blowed a trumpet so loud that it busted some people's eardrums. They hurt their eardrums. They had to go to the doctor. That was about 30, 40 years ago, back in the late, uh, early 70s when they were having all them concerts. And they said that that he, he blowed them, busted them people's eardrums. And I heard Larry Winkler say, glory to God, if man can design an instrument, and a PA system that will bust people's eardrums, then God's got a trumpet that can wake up the dead. Hallelujah, brother. Amen. If a man can design one and bust eardrums, God can make one that will wake up dead people. And one of these days, one of these days, one of these days, the trumpet will sound. The dead in Christ will rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them in the clouds of the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. He's able. He's able to get us out. I'm going to ask you a question this morning. I'm going to ask you a question. Just you a question. Do you need him in your life? Do you need the Lord in your life? He's able. He's able. He's able. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Let's stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. Let's stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. Every head bowed. Every eyes closed. Can I tell you something this morning? He's able. Oh, oh, preacher, you don't know what I'm going through. No, I don't. No, I don't. But I do know this. He's able. You say, Brother Danny, Brother Danny, you don't know how far I've got away from God. No, I don't. But he's able. You say, Brother Danny, I don't, I'm, I'm a half an atheist. Well, if you're just a half one, that means there's half of you that believes. And that's plenty. That's plenty. Will you let the Lord help you this morning? How about it, sir? How about it, ma'am? Huh? How about it? We're going to pray and they're going to sing. If you're here this morning and you don't know that you're saved, if you don't know that you're saved, I'd invite you to just get out. We've already got a lot of people up here praying right now. You need to come. You need to come. You need to come. You say, Brother Danny, is everything ever, ever going to work out in my life? Well, I don't know when or how, but I know it can. I know it can. I know God's able. Will you let him help you this morning? Our Heavenly Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name for that one here this morning who needs help, Lord, who needs grace, who needs forgiveness. Please, Lord Jesus, help them, Father, I pray. Holy Ghost, come down. Do a great and mighty work here today. Lord, save that one which is lost. Touch somebody. Lord, I'm glad you're able. Whatever you do, we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray, and for his sake we ask it. Amen. They're going to sing. You need to come. You come right now. You come right now. Come on, right now. Amen. Amen. Will you let the Lord help you this morning? Come on, just get out of your seat, come right now. Come on, come on, just get down here. Come on, sir. Hey, just take take that first step. I said, Lord will help you the rest of the way. Come on, sir. Come on, come on, right now. Amen. Amen. The Savior reaching out to me with hands that bore my sin. Yeah, come on. Love greater love was shown. Then on the cross it Calvary. That's right. And I decided then and there. The choice was clear to me. Hey. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus today. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus. Yeah, I'll take Jesus every time. He means he more to me. He means more to me yeah, than the world you see. There's no question in my mind. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Amen. Amen. Every time. You need to come? Come on. Come on.
Come on, right now. Make that step. What about these opportunities? Will you take Jesus today? Yes, preacher. Yeah, preacher. I'll take Jesus. Come on, take him this morning. Come on, take him. Maybe you're watching from home. Maybe you're watching online. I need to bow your head right there. Just say, dear God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. I'd rather be Amen. Yeah, hallelujah. Amen, Lord of God. Come on now. Let me tell you what I do. Hey. I'll take Jesus. Hey. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus every time. He means more to me. He means more to me than the world. Than the world you see. There's no question in my mind. Hey. I'll take Jesus every time. Let's do that course. Everybody. And I'll take Jesus. Hey. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus every time. He means more than me. Come on now. Than the world you see. There's no question in my mind. Hey. I'll take Jesus every time. Amen. 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 Hope you can leave here this morning. I hope you can leave here this morning, say, all, all is well. All to Jesus, I surrender. I surrender all. That's the best way to live your life. Just give it all to Him. Give it all to Him. Give your whole life to it. You will never regret it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, girl. Amen. All right. Now, listen up. If you're not signed up for the Rockingham trip, get signed up here this morning. Also, we're having choir practice at 5 o'clock. If you're in the choir, or should be, uh, you'll be here at uh, 5 o'clock this evening. Real special service tonight, of course. I don't want to miss it. The next Sunday night is our youth night. We're having it at 5 o'clock next Sunday evening. This is for all the young people, so don't miss that. Don't miss it, okay? All right, let's 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 go. We'll meet back here at 5 o'clock this evening. Everybody have a good evening. We'll be uh, we'll bow our head and be dismissed with a word of prayer. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, they said it was Brother Steve's birthday the other day, and I didn't know it, so I think uh, for his birthday, he's going he's gonna to sing a song and give $1,000. That's what, that's what your wife said. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And Roxanne, is your birthday also? My, 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 my. You people, you. Bur- I mean, Bond's birthday is tomorrow. March was a good time for us, wasn't it? All right, all right. Let's bow our heads for prayer and be dismissed. Go ahead, proceed.